Welcome to Author Stories, the podcast where we talk to the best writers in the industry and discuss writing and the creative process. Whether you're a writer, a reader, or both, we hope you'll find something here that makes you love books and the writers that create them. You can find archives of all of the great conversations I've had with authors over the years at hankgarner.com. Take some time and browse around there. I'm sure you'll find a new author to love, find inspiration for your own creative life, and find a new story to get lost in. My guest on today's show is Craig Johnson, author of the Walt Longmire Mystery Series. He is out now with his 15th book in this amazing series. You might be familiar with Longmire from Netflix and the, uh, the excellent series that they did there for a number of seasons. Well, now Craig is out with the 15th in the Walt Longmire Mystery Series, and this is a brand new adventure for Walt and the gang, and we talk all about it today. Before we get into our fifth annual interview with Craig Johnson, let's thank some sponsors who make the show possible. The Unwelcome Trilogy by R.D. Brady, Survivor, Mother, Leader, and Humanity's Last Chance. Deep within the remnants of the United States, Lila Richards oversees a camp of 200 survivors. In a world where living is an everyday struggle and only through banding together can people survive, the arrival of the unwelcome only made her job harder. Riley Quinn and Miles Jones have been raised by Lila for the last five years. They're also one of the cursed, the children between the ages of 13 and 18, whom the unwelcome kill on sight. No questions, no pleas, just death. Protecting one another and the people of their camp is ingrained in all of them, but now each of them faces increased danger as the reason why the cursed have been targeted by the unwelcome slowly comes to light, and that truth will shock them to their core. Now time is running out, not just for the cursed who are being hunted down by the unwelcome, not just for Lila and her family who will face the greatest challenge yet, but for all of humanity. The world changed radically 35 years ago, but today humanity's very existence is on the line, and the fight has begun that will ensure its future or its annihilation. Fans of A.G. Riddle, James Rollins, Suzanne Collins, and Brandon Sanderson will love the Unwelcome Trilogy. Pick up your copy of the Unwelcome Trilogy on Amazon today. Edge of Valor, a military sci-fi thriller by Josh Hayes. When their mission fails, his begins. David Weber calls it a tour de force. Special Agent Jackson Fisher is a man after truth. When a military operation to extract a high-ranking ambassador from the war-torn border world of Stonemeyer ends in disaster, Fisher is called in to investigate. A whole platoon went in, but only three Alliance Marines returned home. The rest killed in action along with hundreds of civilians. With tensions between the Holloman Alliance and Stonemeyer rising. Fisher attempts to stitch the pieces together. One thing becomes more and more certain. The surviving Marines are lying. As the truth unfurls, Fisher begins to realize this was far more than a simple rescue mission and that the truth might be something best left buried. Filled with action, mystery, and well-crafted characters, Edge of Valor, the Valor series book one, will put you into a world of war, conspiracy, and betrayal. It's perfect for fans of David Weber's Honorverse or Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan with a futuristic flair. That's Edge of Valor by Josh Hayes. R.J. Panero and his brand new book, Chilling Effect, a global climate thriller. A ruthless eco-terrorist, a woman determined to stop him. Chilling Effect, R.J. Panero's newest thriller, explores a world in the not-too-distant future where terrorism is taken to a new level, one with world-ending consequences. You never know what you're capable of until the monster inside of you pushes you beyond your moral line in the sand. These are the opening thoughts of former climatologist William Christed as he prepares to attack our delicate ecosystem. He's hell-bent on avenging his father's death and will go to extremes of terrorism never before seen, all to strike a blow to those whose hubris led to his father's demise. He will take full advantage of the greed and narcissism ever present in the world as well as the fragility of our planet to ecological terrorism and use it to plot a scenario so grim yet so compellingly real it could have ripped from today's headlines. Check out the brand new thriller Chilling Effect from R.J. Panero. Michael Anderley has a brand new series that's launching. It's called Opus X and the first 
book is Obsidian Detective, two rebels whose worlds collide on a planetary level. On the fringes of human space, a murder will light a fuse and send two different people colliding together. She lives on Earth, where peace among the population is a given. He is on the fringe of society, where authority is how much power you wield. She's from the powerful, the elite, he's with the military. Both want the truth, but is revealing the truth good for society? Check out Obsidian Detective, the very first book that's up for pre-order now, from the new series Opus X by Michael Anderley. Well, thanks for joining me again for the Author Stories Podcast, where I bring you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Today, I am super excited to have Craig Johnson back on the show to talk about the brand new Walt Longmire book. Uh, Craig, this is like our fifth year in a row to talk about the new Longmire book. Welcome back to the show. Hey, we do hard work, don't we? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> the uh, the new book is called Land of Wolves, and, and let me tell you, uh, I think this is this is the best Longmire book yet. Congratulations Boy, on this 15. Is a, this, is, this is a great way to start an interview is all I can I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's it's you know it's it's when you're writing a series of books like that I mean you really have to you know kind of you know, keep a mind um, to the fact that like each one you know is an entity unto itself like that and uh, you know the, the, the you know try not to be you know formulaic like I try and be predictable you know and uh, to allow the characters to evolve as much as you possibly can and so you know it, it's always nice to hear those kind of responses you know after 15 years of writing these books. Well, coming, you know, when you when you approach uh, something like book fifteen, you know, and and uh, each book is a is a brand new creation and it's a new adventure and all that, but you know, we we tend to put uh, weight to certain numbers, and, and you know, fifteen is a that that's a, a big milestone. Um, did, when you first started approaching this book, you know, did did those things? Uh, you know, play uh, on your mind and emotions like that when when you've had uh, such a long running series and so much success with a character like this. I don't know. I mean, I guess I I I look at the number fifteen and it doesn't seem all that impressive to me. Um, it, it doesn't seem like. But then again, I look back at you know the fifteen years of writing these books and it seems like it's only been a couple of years, which I guess means I'm having a really good time, right? I mean, it, the old adage is that time flies. You know, when you're having fun like that. And, uh, you know, I really do feel as though I've only been doing this for a couple of years. It doesn't feel like any kind of a long slog, you know, or uh, or anything. I mean, one of the benefits, I think, is, is that, you know, being with a literary press like Viking Penguin, they really don't put any kind of qualifications on me about, you know, uh, what it is that I'm going to write about or how I'm going to write it. Or anything. I mean, the contracts that I have with them, you know, for the Walt Longmire book say it must be a mystery and have Walt Longmire in it, and that's it, you know. And so, you know, that that leaves me with a lot of creative freedom, you know, to be able to go in a lot of different directions. Um, and so, you know, after doing it for 15 years, I'm still, you know, st- you know, stretching my wings here, and uh, and trying to do something different with each book. Look at and uh, and that's that's kind of you know fun. Um, you know, for me, the writing process is, you know, is a, is a joy. Look at, I mean, I'm always listening, you know, certainly to, you know, usually literary fiction folks look at that, you know, we're working on a book for eight or nine years and they talk about what torture writing is and how horrible it is and all this. And all I can ever think is you're not doing it right. Something's wrong here. And, uh, you know, cause for me, it's like breathing, it's like eating or drinking or whatever. Like I, if I couldn't write, you know, every day, I, I'd kind of be in tough shape. And, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe certain aspects of that, you know, might come from the fact that, you know, I'm not reinventing the wheel with each book, but also the, the, the character of Walt himself, you know, I think I stumbled onto um, a really accessible character for people. And, uh, you know, you know, I, I, the, the adage that I always, you know, use is, is that, of course, there was that period in time when Arthur Conan Doyle got, you know, so tired of Sherlock Holmes that he threw him off the Rhinesbeck, you know, falls just to get rid of him like that, you know, but I'm not writing about a coke addicted sociopath, you know, I'm not just <laughs> writing about a really nice guy, you know, with a sense of humor, who's intelligent, um, who's very self-effacing like that, that, you know, that uh, has a very humble quality to him like that, but he also is very determined. He's also, you know, very capable like that. And, uh, you know, he's all, well, you know, people ask how much of me is Walt, 
And my wife has the best response to that where she says, you know, Walt is who Craig would like to be in 10 years. It's just that he's off to an incredibly slow start. And uh, there's probably more truth to that than I'm willing to admit, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, you know, we, we always talk about uh, as writers how much of the characters are us. And, and a lot of people assume that, you know, this is this is you writing from your experience. And, and sometimes that's true and sometimes not. Um, but when you think about Walt and when you're thinking about a new book, do you think uh, – is Walt to you – um, is he and, and his story, is this part of – do you approach it like, okay, this is a part of me that I need to look into myself and see what I'm thinking right now? Or do you think of Walt as a friend and you sit down and have a conversation with Walt and find out what's going on in his life? Well, I mean, whenever you're writing, you know, you're pretty much the only person, you know, in the room, um, you know, and, and when people ask, you know, my wife, they'll say, you know, who's, who's probably the person that's the most knowledgeable of my writing process, because she's the one that has to tolerate it there at the ranch, you know, on, on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, the, the people always ask, you know, which characters, you know, are, you know, who, or who the other characters are based off of. Um, you know, one of my favorite quotes on writing is the one from Wallace Stegner on writing and teaching fiction, where he says the greatest you know piece of fiction ever written is the disclaimer at the beginning of every book that says nobody in this book is based off anybody alive or dead. You know, and what a crock that is. You know, because that's your job to go find people to put in your books like that. But in the final analysis, you know, you really are the only one in the room. Like, and you're going to have to draw you know from yourself um, you know, to to construct these characters. And, you know, I think that that's, you know, really the the wonderful thing about literature and the wonderful thing about books, because, you know, there, there's an empathy there like that, that I think that goes along, you know, with the written word and an understanding of other human beings like that, that obviously happens when you read. But I think it also happens when you write. Um, you have to stretch yourself out like that and get out on that thin ice of being, you know, somebody else. And to try and understand them, you know, try and understand their desires, their fears, the motivations for what it is that they're doing in their lives and all of these things. And, you know, that's that's a constant battle on a day to day basis um, within the writing. And it, it's also one of the great joys like, to try and have that kind of understanding of human nature. Well, the last two books uh, that started with the Western Star and then book 14 was Depth of Winter. You took us. On this amazing adventure, uh, along with Walt, uh, way out of Walt's depth, uh, or at least out of his his typical norm, um, and the Western Star, you know, we got this great hat tip to Agatha Christie and that that uh, <laughs> that that train based mystery, which I loved, and I, I loved how how subtle it was, and uh, you know, and then Depth of Winter brought this great climax and culmination to all of the stuff that you started in the Western Star. Um, and we got to see Walt in completely new surroundings with with characters that um, that brought serious uh, uh, harm and uh, and emotional scarring uh, to Walt. Uh, in f book fifteen, the new one, Land of Wolves, you bring Walt back home, uh, but that does not mean that life is any easier for Walt. Uh, what was the uh, what was the planning process uh, for book 15 and bringing Walt back home and finding out what you could do to him uh, in familiar surroundings again? Well, whenever you have a book that has the havoc, you know, that, that was supported, you know, in the uh, depth of winter um, and taking that character, Walt, you know, and really pushing him out of that thin ice, maybe in a place, you know, where he's never been before, like at certainly Northern Mexico against these drug cartels, you know, he has to, you know, kind of, you know, discover, rediscover, like, uh, the individual that he was in Vietnam, um, as, as Henry.